a vaccination clinic under the shade of the mango trees. The singing is beautiful, the words prosaic. My baby is crying. I need to take her to be vaccinated. Yet to get the jabs into the baby's arms requires a monumental effort. It's an eight kilometer cycle ride for health worker Bernadette Mundesia. The vaccine syringes and cool box supplied by UNICEF strapped to her back or the bike. The mothers have walked just as far, if not further, and they need to leave before the sun becomes too fierce. This is protection against viruses, tuberculosis, typhoid, and now malaria. It is in this tiny village in southern Malawi. A moment in history. The mothers and the healthcare workers know the ravages of malaria. And at least under these trees, they know that the vaccine is having some impact. It's taken 35 years to develop against a disease that, according to UNICEF, globally kills one child under five years old nearly every minute. <laughs> Along with Kenya and Ghana, Malawi was a trial country. Since 2019, it's been vaccinating children under five in 11 districts. Now it's being rolled out in nine other countries, a success story of sorts. The trials showed at best 75% efficacy, enough for the World Health Organization to approve it. And it is a start. Because the consequences of malaria can be devastating. The entire health center in Chikwawa. 300 patients a day and half of them have malaria, most of them under five. Three-year-old Shakira barely stirs in her mother's arms. She has severe malaria. She's given a shot of an anti-malarial drug. And her mother's told to wait for the ambulance to take her to the nearest district hospital. Why she hadn't been vaccinated wasn't clear. But distance is often a factor. Mothers having to walk 10, 15 kilometers to get to a clinic, even more to get to a hospital. In this case, Mashinga District is 51 kilometers away from that clinic. We're just coming onto the pediatric ward at Machanga District Hospital where some of the sickest children are being helped. It's a heart-rending sight. We're not showing it, but this little boy had just finished convulsing as malaria and sepsis ravaged his body. The nurse tells me they'd had five deaths from malaria in January. It's always worse in the rainy season. This three-year-old, though, he's recovered and can go home today. And we look for Shakira, but she's not here. The anti-malarial drug had reduced her symptoms, so her mother took her home. If the malaria vaccine can stop so many children from ending up in hospitals like this, or even worse, dying, then that, of course, is to be celebrated. But there is a note of caution. It is only one weapon in the arsenal. There is still a desperate need for malaria nets, for better sanitation, and for a fight against misinformation. Suspicion about a new vaccine is common. On a more practical note, the malaria vaccine is four doses with a large dropout by the final one at 22 months. And then there are the healers and God to contend with. What do you think of the barriers to rolling out the vaccine? Of course, you know, of which doctors who can claim to treat uh, uh, malaria and treat any other, any other disease. Uh, but uh, especially on the churches, we have other uh, religions that 
stop their members from uh, accessing healthcare uh, services, including immunization. So those ones are really hard. A mud floor and bricks for a pulpit. The Zion City Church, led by Reverend Kennedy Columbola, a church that he says has thousands of congregants across the country. And its central belief, faith will heal you, and vaccines are the work of Satan. Good morning. We went to meet him on the outskirts of Malawi's capital, Victoria MacDonald, and asked him why he's not encouraging people to get vaccinated against malaria. What is it in the Bible that says they shouldn't have vaccines? They shared footage with us of one of those healing ceremonies. The issue is that without vaccine and without hospital treatment, many children die. It, can you live with that? This is a country in which malaria is endemic, and in the villages where the vaccine hasn't arrived and the mosquito nets just aren't there, it is little surprise they seek help elsewhere. Up a long dirt track outside Zomba in southern Malawi, we meet a self-described witch doctor. Ah, uh, come here. <laughs> And like the church, his belief is that modern medicine and vaccines can be substituted, in his case, with tree barks and herbs. Do you worry that uh, a child might become very sick if they get malaria? I. The highest malaria rates in Malawi are along the rivers on the central plains and here on the lake shores. A cocktail of waters for mosquito breeding and poverty. And nearby, a gathering of the children for us to see that burden in person. Blind, incontinent, disabled. Malawi's government has committed to eradicating malaria by 2030. They were quick to offer themselves as a trial country, the vaccine provided for free. Is there a commitment from the Malawian government to continue the malaria vaccination programme? Yes, yes. So we're doing everything possible uh, to make sure that the, the interventions that are, uh, have got an impact uh, we continue, so including the malaria vaccine. Uh, actually, uh, there are plans to roll out to have more districts. There are those supply issues with the drug company GSK unable to produce anywhere near enough to meet the overwhelming global demand. A second vaccine later this year from Oxford University and the Serum Institute will help. And while the health workers will still have to cycle along dirt tracks and the clinics will still be held under the shade of the trees, there are now children who will survive, who won't be harmed by the deadly bite of the mosquito. Well, joining me live now is Donny Matagula, who is a medical epidemiologist at the Malawi Liverpool Welcome Programme, which focuses on the implementation and practice of health interventions that reduce high burden diseases in Africa. Um, let's start with the good news, first of all, shall we? We've seen that the vaccine is starting 
to reach people in need. It kills so many people, and especially young children, each year. How hopeful are you? Well, I'm actually very, very hopeful, and it is certainly good news that we are now able to roll out the vaccine. Uh, we started with um, 11 districts, and currently now there are plans to even expand to other districts. So it is certainly good news, and uh, having demonstrated um, uh, that we can deliver, you know, as as, as Malawi um, rolling out the vaccine to, to the country is actually a very positive note to start. Of course, there are challenges uh, that we have faced uh, with the uh, vaccine rollout. And Victoria showed us in her report some of the obstacles, including some mm. churches that preach that the vaccine, this vital vaccine, is evil, and the work of Satan. How do you overcome mm -hmm. that? Yeah, it is certainly a challenge that we are facing in country, and um, um, we do overcome that by excessive uh, behavior change communication, which we give out to the masses. There's a lot of effort that we're doing to educate um, Malawians, mothers uh, who have their children who are eligible for the vaccine, um, to, to let them know that the vaccine is not there to, you know, kill them or, or, or that we have any other evil plan against them, but rather to save the lives of, uh, the lives of their children. So there are lots of efforts that we're actually doing in the communities, um, educating them to make sure that their children are vaccinated. And supply is another worry, isn't it? There's an undersupply and you've got this horrific disease that is now right. preventable. I mean, the West seem very capable of creating enough vaccines to deal with COVID. Do you think that they should be producing more for Africa at this point? I think so. I think production of more vaccines would ensure that we there is timely access to the vaccine and also that we're able to reach to uh, as many children as, as possible. As, you, as I already mentioned, we're only covering 11 districts in the country, yet we have, uh, that's, that's just 50% of the country, but we know that the entire country is actually at risk of, uh, uh, of malaria. So if we had more vaccines and um, if there was um, adequate supply of the vaccine, it would actually be a very good situation for us. Okay, and, and, and briefly, I mean, the goal is to eradicate malaria in Malawi by 2030 and basically eradicate everywhere else at the same time. Do you think that's likely? I think we're very, very hopeful and optimistic about that goal. That is a goal that we set it. I was part of the process of setting that goal. And we're very, very optimistic. We understand that the last mile is going to be challenging. But we're very optimistic in um, in in, in um, you know uh, making sure that there are all okay. the efforts to er eradicate malaria in Malawi by 2020.